Hello and welcome to another lap guide. So for this guide, we're going to go over Long Beach for the week 13 event that was organized this weekend by Cam Walsh. So big thanks to him for organizing that. The historic showdown at Long Beach is what that's called. And we actually have four separate races. We've got the Audi, Lotus 49, Lotus 79. And for this guide, we're looking at the Nissan GTP. So before we get into the details, let's go ahead and play this back first without commentary. Okay, so left time there's a 112 382 and the uh, the weather that we have as I mentioned is a fixed weather for this event so I've got my test session set up to match that it'll be 75 Fahrenheit which is going to be 100 Fahrenheit track temp we also have 65 percent usage of the track so let's go ahead and go through this uh, turn by turn in more detail uh, and actually before I do that quick note about the uh, laser scan because this is a tech track, you've got your laser points for the unfinished portions of the track. And I've got some settings that I use to, to kind of adjust the way that those appear. It kind of helps to uh, not only give you different reference points or visual cues around the track, but also uh, kind of give you an idea of where all of those things would be if this track were finished. So under your uh, renderer, dx11.ini file, you'll find a laser scan section. And these are the settings that I'm currently using for that. So, of course, you can you can experiment with those and uh, kind of get different of different appearances of the way that these laser points will appear there. But that's what I currently have those set to. All right, so let's go through this uh, in more detail, turn by turn. Let's see. Go back to the start of the lap. All right. So coming up into turn one. Now this actually would this would actually be penalized crossing over the pit exit line, but because it's an unfinished track and that's something that I think just hasn't been built into it, uh, we're okay to use this without uh, penalty to come over to uh, get an entry into turn one. And so that's always used uh, from what I've seen in any other races that were held here in iRacing. And so you can get away with doing that, but uh, typically in the real world, they actually would penalize you for crossing over this pit entry or pit exit line that uh, that you would have there. So as you cross over, the 400 is your threshold break point. So there's going to be about a 70% or so break. The uh, With the heat and with this surface, it's pretty slippery. And so you can't break quite as hard as you might typically break in other tracks. But um, uh, for me, that's about a 70% at that four, 400 marker then you're just going to kind of keep it straight here and get as close to the wall here to open up your entry into turn one and as you turn it a turn uh, to your apex here in turn one you can kind of come up over into the banked portion of this curbing a little bit without too much trouble without unsettling the car too much but try not to take too much of that because that can potentially delay your throttle uh, you want to be getting on throttle just as you come off the curbing here to uh, get back up to speed here through uh, the exit of the corner and as you exit the corner you also want to uh, come pretty close to the wall here I'm actually coming up over the line a little bit uh, within inches of that wall really and you can get back to th uh, to full throttle here in second gear briefly as you come up toward uh, turns two and three so 
Let's play this back at speed before we go into those corners. All right, so coming up into turns two and three around the fountain, um, it's going to be uh, pretty light braking uh, as you kind of downshift into first gear here, maybe about 50% brake, downshift into first, and then just kind of lightly braking or trail braking around the, uh, the fountain area here. You can cross over this curbing here to the right. Uh, there is a little bit of a bump there, not too rough, but um, just kind of keeping that nice and steady and not Try not to carry too much speed in. Uh, if you carry too much speed into the corner, then uh, you're going to run a little wide, and then you're going to be in danger of coming up into the wall here on the left, and that'll delay your throttle. So you want to be getting on throttle as you kind of round the latter part of the curbing here, and then aim to kind of get the car as close to the wall here on the left as you open up steering and then return to uh, full throttle there briefly and shifting up into second gear there. So let's go ahead and play that uh, section of the track here. All right, so for turn four, once again, just getting as close to the wall as you can. Uh, you'll see I'll kind of come up over the line a little bit. Actually, probably could have used a little bit more uh, of that space there even. And again, as you come into the apex of the corner, you can actually come up onto the banked portion of the curbing just a bit, but try not to do that too much. Again, you don't want to unsettle the, two, the car too much as you're getting off the curbing and then now back to throttle just as you come off the curbing there. Let the car run all the way out to the wall. And uh, again, crossing over and just coming within a few inches of the wall there. Full throttle in second gear. And now your braking point, uh, I don't have a specific a specific marker for that, but um, it's maybe about midway down uh, on the left here prior to where the, uh, the change in asphalt color occurs. So about a 50% brake right at about this point. Keeping the car in second gear. And you want to be careful not to turn in over the... Uh, the taller uh, sausage curbings here because you can actually damage the car so I just come I try to come as close to those as I can and keeping it really light on throttle as a car, car kind of crosses up over this uh, this change in camber in the road it's going to become very off camber and you really want to be easy on throttle as you're coming around the apex and here and be mindful of opening up your steering before you get back to throttle here and use all of the road that you can so that you can get steering opened up and get back to throttle and as soon as you can. Uh, if you try to get to full throttle too soon here and you're if you're still if you're still turning the wheel too much as you get back to throttle, you can spin here pretty quickly. So you definitely want to be careful of that. It's a very challenging corner here that um, because of the camber of the road and because of the, the kind of the bumps that the car takes coming up over this little ridge here in the road, it can definitely unsettle the car and send you into a spin in a hurry there. So be very careful rolling back onto the throttle here. All right, so let's play that through. All right, so coming up into turn six, uh, my brake mark for turn six is, I'd say, in between the 200 and the 300. So you're going to see about a, I don't know, 65, 70% or so braking there at that point. And waiting to, to turn in until about the 100. And so just as the car's kind of crossed under the 100 bore here, turning in, you see I'm using about as much of the road here as I can. And turning in and aiming to cross over the red and white curbing on the left and then you want to get back to throttle just as you've as you've crossed that point so getting on throttle right as the car has has crossed that uh, that apex there should be your goal and again the the car is going to be a little unsettled coming off of this corner you'll see it kind of bumping a little bit you want to ease on throttle and again use as much road as you can but try not to run too wide because as you're coming off of, of uh, the exit here of this corner you really want to get over to the left to set up for uh, turn eight and you want to do that early rather than later because you don't really have a lot of time to get the car set up into the braking zone for turn eight and so before I go into turn eight let's go ahead and play this corner back uh, turn six and seven <laughs> So you can see I'm kind of making a beeline to the left-hand side here pretty quickly. Once uh, 
once the car is up to full throttle and then shifting up into third gear here, coming straight over to the left pretty quickly. Uh, and I actually could have potentially used a little bit more of the, the space here. You really want to give yourself a nice as wide a possible entry into turn eight as you can. So as you're braking now, right past the 200, you can see that's where about my threshold break point is. It's probably again between the two and the 300. There's about a 50% break in between the 200 and 300. So you wanna have the car over to the left by that point so that you're straightened up for braking. And as you're in your braking zone and as you're, you're braking in a straight line here, you're now giving, your, giving yourself time to set up for your turn in to make sure you hit this apex. Now, what I'm aiming to do is to actually cross over the red and white curbing pretty close to where the cone is here. Uh, be careful and avoid hitting any cones. And as usual in any track and eye racing, if you hit a cone, it can get lodged up under the front end of your car and it can actually stick there and stay there throughout the rest of your race. And that will actually affect the car and slow you down. So avoid cones if you can. Uh, sometimes they'll get hit by another car and it's kind of a gamble as far as whether or not that cone gets lodged up uh, under your front wing or something like that. But for cones that you can avoid and cones that are positioned like this, just get as close to them as you can, but try not to hit them. So you can see there's, this is where the apex of the corner is, crossing up over the curbing and getting back to throttle just as the car has reached that point. Uh, the, uh, the corner here, the apex here, is probably the, one of the most unforgiving as far as missing this point will cost you a lot of speed on exit as you're coming up onto uh, probably the, the second best passing zone on the track. This is your second longest straight of the track. So you wanna make sure you get a good exit here, but if you have to lift to avoid running off over into the tire barrier here, it's gonna cost you a lot of speed. And of course, if you, if you don't, if you don't uh, run the right line and you run a little bit wide, um, you, that can very easily end your race, hitting these uh, tire barriers here on the left. So you want to make sure that uh, you're not running too wide. You can get the car straightened out and back to full throttle. It looks like I'm reaching full throttle right at about the end of that tire barrier there. So let's play that through at speed. All right, so coming down this uh, back straight here, we're looking for a braking zone right at about the uh, 300. I, I think it's almost exactly at the 300 as far as threshold goes. Threshold goes. So when I say threshold, that's just really the maximum braking point. So getting about a 75% or so break at that done, at that point done, right at that 300. So braking hard and then easing off pretty quickly to avoid lockup um, using. Uh, uh, pretty good amount of the road here. Probably could use it just a little bit more. Uh, and then again, coming across the curbing and getting close to the cones here on the right. So it's interesting because this is an unfinished track. And there are there are lines that I take through here that could potentially turn out to be a cut track penalty. But uh, I don't think all of the uh, the cut track zones have been programmed in or you know configured because it's an unfinished track. So that that could ultimately become something that's considered a cut track, but uh, you can actually come even further up than this, uh, even closer to the cones. But I aim to just kind of come across and get as close to those cones as I can, getting on throttle here, here at the apex of the corner, easing onto that. This is another corner where if you find yourself carrying just a little bit too much speed and you run a little bit too wide, you can slide off into the wall in a hurry there. And so uh, be definitely wary of that and uh, try not to, uh, Try not to uh, get on throttle too eagerly if you run a little wide of this apex. Yeah, you, you might find the car getting a little, sliding a little bit out on you in the uh, the midpoint here. And you actually don't really want to use all of the exit. You'll notice that I never really come all the way over uh, anywhere near this line here on the exit because you're now setting up already for turn uh, 10. So let's play this back before we get to turn 10. All right, so for turn 10, there are uh, kind of a couple of different apexes here. You're, you're aiming, again, to just come pretty close to the cones here. I'm crossing over the curbing, and again, this may ultimately turn out to be a cut track penalty, but the current state of the track, there is no penalty for that. Um, and then just coming up onto the curbing here, and I think my, my goal here is to get pretty close to where the tire barrier is. 
to uh, to open up this uh, the final corner, turn 11, being your most important and probably one of the most difficult corners on the track, it's pretty bumpy. And what I found was that if I didn't open up wide and I and I kind of cut in too early, there's a more significant bump here. You don't really want to get too close to the red and white curbing on this final corner because it does uh, unsettle the car quite a bit. And as the car comes across that bump, that can potentially delay getting on throttle coming off the corner. And my goal as I'm coming across the, the midpoint here is just at or just past that midpoint to be starting to roll on throttle already, just kind of gradually rolling in on the throttle. You can see how much uh, steering is still being done here, but uh, unwinding the steering and letting the car come out to the wall here straightening up pretty close to the wall and now that I've got the car straightened up I can now start to commit to getting back to full throttle uh, but because the car is now down into first gear just be extra cautious you know as the, as the turbo is now spooling up at this point you can actually see uh, let me uh, hide the interface there where the uh, the turbo is spooled up there on the left hand side so it's coming up uh, to full right at about right about the point where I'm shifting into second gear, really. So uh, be careful of that, because as that power kicks in, that's where your, your rear tire is going to break free on you. So you've got to be very careful getting back to full throttle there. So be sure you're absolutely straightened up and that you're kind of gradually rolling up to full throttle. All right, so let's go ahead and play through turns 10 and 11 at speed. <laughs> So just a maybe final note on turn 11. You'll notice that my steering inputs are actually pretty quickly quickly done there. Um, you want to make sure that you're not carrying too much speed into this corner because the car will really understeer around the final corner. And if you're understeering into it, you're going to find yourself pointing at the wall and wondering how you're going to get the car you know, turned in time. So the speed of the car, it's very important to make sure that you get your speed down to about, let's see what, 30 miles per hour. Actually, my lowest point was 26 miles per hour at the midpoint, but by the time I actually turn in, you'll see that the turning input is done very, very quickly because you want a nice, sharp, decisive turn in there. You don't want to just gradually roll it around. You just really want to crank the wheel hard. Uh, reaching steering lock really is what's happening there. And so my goal when I turn in is just to crank it as hard as hard and as quick as I can because the car is going to be going pretty slow at that point and you want a nice sharp turning radius at that point. So as you turn in, get open up the open up uh, the corner as much as you can and then crank it hard. Let the car uh, come around here and this is really you'll let me come back to where I've actually reached steering lock. Yeah, right right here I'm actually reached steering lock. 30 miles per hour, letting the car just now come around, already back on throttle, just kind of easing it on, unwinding steer, steering, and now exiting out. So let's play that at, at speed again. All right, so there's a lap of Long Beach. Hope you found it helpful, and talk to you later.